Welcome back to KM Builds and you may be wondering why am I stood next to a 2013 standard Renault Clio, something you probably won't see on the channel a lot and there's good reason for that. So let me show you what it looked like before we got it looking like this. If we run through the damage then on the Clio, so as you can see the bonnet is pretty mashed up so we will need a replacement bonnet and then the primary damage is on the driver's side. So as you can see here, the bumper is pretty much written off. We'll need to replace that. We also need a new sort of neck, I guess, for the, the wash uh, bottle. Um, the grill looks okay, um, but we'll probably try and pick one up for the bumper if we can. And we can also see the crash bar has obviously come through the bumper. So this write-off was actually categor categorized as a CAT S, which I believe is structural. Um, you can get CAT N as well, which is non-structural. Now, we have had a quick scan. I don't think any of the chassis legs or anything like that are bent, but I think it's because of this, this crash bar, which is why they've done it. Um, something also to bear in mind when buying crash cars is when you initially look at them on the auctions, you sort of guess what parts are okay, what parts are not. And we actually thought this wing was going to be fine, but it has got a crack in the top. So we will need to replace that as well, which... It's not end of the world, um, but again, it's another 80 quid, maybe 100 quid on a part that we didn't maybe factor in. So it's something to bear in mind that you can't see everything and there may be some hidden damages that you need to factor in as well. So now you've seen what it looked like when we picked it up. Obviously, it had that nasty crash on the driver's side where it took some impact. And today's video, as the title suggests, really, is it's going to be about all the mistakes that me and Ken made, you know, right through from the beginning in terms of maybe what we paid for the Clio, right then um, to the other end in terms of all the parts that we maybe didn't consider. Things like headlight brackets, you know, things that until you really tear it down and get into the detail, you might not know you need to replace. So what the outcome of this video should be is that you, at the end of it, either know a lot more about Copart, you may make a more informed decision, or you may decide that it's not for you. I, I don't think it's as easy as it's portrayed on YouTube. Um, and this is a very basic car, it's not a complex one in terms of a repair, but what it does do is provide you an insight into what Copart rebuilding looks like. So looking at the cost of the Clio, we actually won the car for 1050, but it had a reserve of 1500 on it. So they didn't accept that originally. We counted at 1100, and after going back and forth a little bit, uh, they accepted that, that price. Then um, in terms of the cost, we've got 169 for the buyer's fee. We've got 59 pound for the virtual bid fee, 40 pound for the lot retrieval. So that's getting it out of the yard in Copart, 53 pound 60 for the VAT, £110 for the delivery, and then £22 for the VAT of that delivery. Now, that gives us a co total cost of 150560 Something to note, in 2023 when we bought this, so November 23, they used to take off the lot retrieval, so you would essentially save £40 if you had it delivered by them. They've changed this now moving forward, so you don't save that £40. So it might be cheaper now to get an independent to deliver it, depending on where the co-part is in relation to where you are. Um, or equally, if you've got a trailer, you might be able to do it yourself and, and really save some money. So this Clio was bought in November 23, so a number of months ago. Let me know in the comments whether you think that price was a good deal for this car. Based on the damage, you would have seen what we've seen in terms of the front end being smashed up, what it may be likely to cost in terms of repair, let us know in the comments. Do you think it's a good deal? And what do you think it'll cost us to repair that front end? So one of the most important bits of advice I can give you with Copart is bid with your head. It's very easy for us to get emotionally invested when we're bidding and we want to win and things like that. Go into the auction knowing what your maximum bid is, what you're willing to pay for the car. Have an idea before of what it's going to cost you to repair, what they sell straight, what they sell as a category. So you really understand that what you're bidding, you know, won't leave you short. Obviously, if it's a personal car or something like that, it might be different. But if you're buying with the intention to sell, you obviously 
obviously one there for as cheap as possible. So have your maximum bid. And if you win it and it's on reserve and they come back to you, you know, more often than not, they will try and counter if you haven't met what they, you know, they want you to. Um, with the Clio, for example, we won it at 150. We were happy to go up to 110 because we still thought it was a good deal and it showed our intent of buying. But most people will advise, stick with what you bidded and if they accept, great. And if they don't, you know, they've got to put it back through auction um, and you may have a chance to win it again. So if we look at the repair list that we did back in December 2023, you can see maybe sort of the insight into what we thought would need repairing. So initially we thought it was the front bumper, which was grills, fogs, and the lights, because these come with DRLs. We thought that would be 300 pound. We then knew we needed a crash bar, which we thought would be 100 pound, a new driver's wing, which would also be 100 pound, a new bonnet for 200, a new driver's headlight for a hundred pound. And then we budgeted about a hundred pound for miscellaneous stuff like clips, things that maybe we didn't consider. That was another hundred pound, which brought the repair in at 900 pound. That's what we initially budgeted, thinking that's what we'd need to do to get this on the road. That then plus the 150560, brings the total costs in at 2405.60. So before I run through everything it took to get our Clio back on the road, I wanna run through another important tip that I think is valuable when buying cars from Copart. And that tip is a fairly simple one. It's repair quickly. Now, one of the issues we had was we were waiting for parts to come up in the right color, things like that. We took longer, you know, we only do this on the weekend and stuff. So we may strip something one weekend, then find we need a part, weight, stuff like that. Um, my advice is if you can get everything stripped straight away, you know, in one big go, understand all the parts you need um, and then go from there. And if you've got to pay 50 pound more or so to have the part straight away, I think it's worth that because what you may end up is in a situation like us where we've had the car for six months and what it was worth in November and December is very different to what it's worth now in June 24. Um, the market does go up and down. Cars are naturally, you know, a depreciating asset. So that's always a risk. But my advice is if you can repair quickly, you know, do that. It may be a case of paying a little bit more for the parts, paying a little bit more for the right parts so you haven't got to mess about, um, things like that. So now we're going to look at the Clio repair list. So most of the bits you'll see on here um, are similar to what we sort of went through at the start of the video. So the front bumper, the front grill, driver's head, like stuff like that. Um, you will see we paid nothing for the grill because it came with the bumper, but then the £200 we had for the bumper was more because we had to get it painted. So when I mentioned earlier about repair them quickly, sometimes it's about absorbing costs just to get, you know, get the car gone as quick as possible. Um, moving through then to some bits, for example, the logbook. We didn't factor this in when we purchased it um, in the initial costs, but common sense, it applies to every car you purchase. It's 25, 30 pound for a new logbook in your name. Um, there was a number of other parts, so 60 quid on fuel, because we had to drive to get the bonnet. Um, you know, not many people will post them because of the risk of damage and stuff like that. You've then got radiator plastic, bonnet hinge, headlight bracket, daytime running lights, loads of little bits that we didn't consider initially. One other point as well is we, when we purchased the car, it had an MOT until August. So if we'd repaired it in December and it would have had six months plus MOT, people are happy with that. And therefore, you know, they, they'll purchase it with six months plus. Now we're closer to August, um, we've had to re-MOT it, which means then we've had to do an exhaust, we have to do a control arm, drop link, a number of other little bits just to get it through its MOT. Now that's fine because I know once it goes, you know, it, it's going with a clean bill of health, so to speak, um, but it did add to the cost. So the total cost come out at 1246 and equally to get it to the MOT and drive it round and make sure it was okay, we've had to spend um, £78 on tax and insurance. So that brings the total then at 1324 plus the original purchase price, which brings us at 1829.60. <clears throat> now, let me know in the comments whether you think that's a good deal for that car. I think if we were keeping it personally, I think it would be. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the ones available and we know it's you know, in good health in terms of the car itself. But something to consider is what it's worth 
now versus December is obviously different. So that price there might not be as good in terms of the saleability of it. I am anticipating the car will sell for around £3,000. Um, so you can see here for the effort, there's not much profit. If anything, we'll probably take a loss um, because we took so long. It's not going to be a well, I say it's not going to be an astronomical loss. It's going to be a loss ultimately, um, is what I think. Hopefully, we can break even. I've got a few parts like a grill, under tray, stuff like that from the build, from the build, from the repair that we can sell. So maybe we can recoup 150 quid back from that. But I think if you really went into detail, we'll probably be in the negative. Again, when I mentioned that repair quickly, I think if we'd repaired quickly in December and got it gone, we'd be in a different position. But this isn't our full-time job. It's not what we do every day. Therefore, it took longer. And with the parts and stuff, it, it just took longer. It, it is what it is. But it's something you should consider if you're going to rebuild. And that wraps up today's video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it in terms of the Clio, the rebuild, maybe some of the tips, whether you're looking to buy a personal car for a daily, whether you're looking to build something and make a bit of money back hopefully it'll help you make that decision moving forward if you have enjoyed it then please subscribe to the channel and um, we do have a number of builds on here so we've got the k track we've got ken's mx5 my r8 and we've also got another co-part build which is going to be my daily moving forward mm -hmm.